these are some sample example problems on magnetic field and magnetic force uh, our ne next topic uh, so before you actually solve um, the magnetic field and force problems uh, there are a couple of rules actually you need to understand so as I mentioned in my lecture slide so here's the very first rule it's called right hand thumb rule and uh, it finds the direction of the magnetic field uh, due to a long straight wire so here's the example so if you have a long straight wire like this <coughs> and uh, it's carrying current in upward direction so what would be the magnetic field and we know that the magnetic field will be circular pattern right around it so how do you find so then point your using right hand point your thumb towards the direction of the current and your fingers show the direction of the uh, magnetic field so if in this example the field pattern you know there will be many many circular fields right it's not just one circle will be counterclockwise if the current is upward like that uh, so <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you a couple of more different ways to figure out so uh, if uh, let's say the current is right this is a top view actually three-dimensional top view the dot means uh, so that two rules actually the if something is coming out of the phase uh, we use dot right and something is coming into the phase we use this cross this cross is into the phase this is the uh, standard rule um, you know in magnetic field and other you know so this is say uh, this is current right current is coming out of the place say the wire is something like that wire is like this as since you can't draw a three dimensional picture like that that's why we symbolize that so then magnetic field will be circular around it uh, so this is say uh, this is the magnetic field right this will be the magnetic field and how do you find the magnetic field since current is coming uh, you know out of the place the magnetic field will be now counterclockwise like this that because the fingers as a magnetic field right like this so that's the rule so this is the magnetic field this is the current now let's see a slightly different view let's say you lay down the wire straight wire like this so it's carrying current like this right so what would be the magnetic field at, uh, in this region and at this region let's see and do the same rule now you have to do this right uh, so it's, since the current is towards the thumb it's, uh, in this region is out of the phase it's out of the phase right you just put the dots and obviously it's now it has to complete the circle right so it, it will be into the page here right so this these are the magnetic field in two regions so that's how you figure out and let's do one more practice let's say if this is the current then you use the same rule right like this so it's coming out of the page here into the page here right that's on the same rule so these are the magnetic field is the current so these are the couple of rules you know you have to understand here's the first problem uh, to find the magnetic field due to a long straight wire so it says a long straight wire is carrying 10 amp of current right 10 ampere of current out of the page so this dot represents the current coming out of the page the wire is something like that right and we know the magnetic field will be circular pattern and it's action what's the uh, magnetic field uh, both x and y components and the net magnetic field at at this point which is at this coordinate right so first of all let's draw uh, the magnetic field pattern right it will be a circular magnetic field pattern we know right and using the right hand thumb rule it will be counterclockwise because it's right like this it will be counterclockwise like this uh, it's going like this right but here since we are finding the magnetic field at this particular point P uh, and you just need to draw the tangent right tangent gives the magnetic field at that particular instant and uh, so this is your B but uh, it's also acting the component so just draw a little triangle so this is your B Y and this is your B that here's the second part and this is making some theta angle and how do you find this theta from this coordinate because if you since this is 90 degree because this is the tangent right this is the tangent it should make a 90 degree angle you know, with the radius this radius right 
or distance from the wire so since this is theta this is 90 minus theta right uh, so this should be theta as well <clears throat> so what would be the coordinate so this is uh, one two three four each uh, each uh, you know uh, tick is uh, one meter so one two this is two right uh, two meter uh, versus three meter okay right okay so then uh, from here your theta will be inverse 10 right um, so this uh, because we're finding the two third <clears throat> so that's going to be um, 33.7 degree okay if you do that you will find that uh, the theta this theta will be 33.7 degree and which is same as this so then you can find the component so first part is find the magnitude and the direction of the uh, net magnetic field so then uh, then you have to use this formula mu naught i divided by 2 pi r right that's it so and mu naught is a called permeability constant it's a universal constant its value is 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 current is 10 amp divided by 2 pi uh, the distance r r is actually from pythagorean theorem p square plus 3 square right uh, is 3.6 meter so use 3.6 meter right and it's going to be uh, if you do that 5.6 10 to the power negative uh, 7 tesla the unit of magnetic field is Tesla. Okay, now uh, the, its direction is given by the tangent as shown. So, for second part is asking what's the x and y components of the magnetic field, right? So, the x component is if you just do the trigonometry, is uh, B cos theta degree, so 5.6 times about negative 7 uh, cos of 33.7 degree, right? So 4.66 times about negative 7 Tesla. And the Y component will be obviously B sine theta. So just take the sine of that, sine of 33.7 degree. So it's going to give you 3.1 times about negative 7 Tesla. Okay, these are the answers. Okay. So here's the next question. Uh, it's a very typical question in uh, magnetic field due to a long state wire now. So it's asking um, uh, to find the net magnetic field, the total net magnetic field at uh, three different regions, point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. And uh, it says uh, th these are the two long uh, straight wires, right, carrying current in opposite direction, 10 amp each, uh, 10 amperes, but in opposite direction. And it's, it's asking you to find the uh, magnetic field in three different regions. Right? I'm just gonna pick the two regions, you know, particular regions and show you. So let's find out the magnetic field at the center. This is at center. So center means <coughs> this has to be two centimeter, right? And two centimeters since this is a midpoint. So let's figure out the magnetic field at two. So to do that, let me draw the picture again one more. Uh, you know, so these are the two uh, currents, right? 10 amp current. Uh, <clears throat> so let's say I1 and 2, magnitude are same. So we're finding magnetic field here at point 2. So first, uh, <clears throat> you have to figure out the magnetic field due to the top wire in this region. And using the rule, right? Like uh, the right hand rule that I mentioned. So it, it's out of the pace here, right? And it's into the pace. <clears throat> um, because we are since we are finding the magnetic field at point two we are concerned only this magnetic field this is the magnetic field produced by the top wire v1 and do the same thing from the bottom wire so what's the magnetic field contributed from the bottom wire so bottom wire do the same thing right uh, so this is your thumb is your mag uh, is your current in this region the magnetic field will be into the pace right so both in the same direction so this is the magnetic field uh, due to the bottom wire B2. Since both are in the same direction into the pace, uh, the total net magnetic field <coughs> at region number two will be just, you have to add because both are into the pace and by vector rule, right? If something is, uh, if two vectors are going in the same direction in a parallel, uh, you just add them. 
so b1 plus b2 and to find the b1 and b2 you just use the formula we've been using so mu naught i1 by p pi r1 i plus mu two mu naught i2 divided by p pi r2 and uh, so r1 and r2 are two centimeter each <coughs> right because this is the distance from each wire so 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 i1 is 10 amp each 2 pi is um, 2 centimeters so you must come into meters you can do it too plus 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 mu naught right i2 is 10 divided by 2 pi same thing 0 0.02 so that's the net magnetic field in the region of 2 and if you do that uh, calculation 2 then you know, this is the answer right and now let's find out the same thing I'm just, just gonna quickly solve it you know so I'm gonna find the uh, net magnetic field at uh, region number 3 so let's do that so let, let me so now at region number 3 and you can try uh, your own at region number 1 so let me draw the picture again so these are the current direction right and uh, we are going to find the magnetic field in region number 3 right and region number 3 is at 2 centimeter distance from the bottom wire that's what we are given right so then since they are separated by 4 centimeter distance so the total distance right uh, total distance from the top wire to the point number 3 is 4 plus 6 right uh, 4 plus 2 6 centimeter because we're going to need that uh, for calculating the magnetic field right this is your r1 6 centimeter r2 is okay and now let's figure out the direction so same thing so do the same thing right uh, in 3 the magnetic field is a whole pattern right will be into the base right it will be weaker than b2 but this is the direction into the base b2 uh, i'm sorry b1 from the top wire right and do the same thing now the magnetic field in the region three due to the bottom wire will be what so in region number three it, it will be out of the pace it's coming out of the pace like this right in this region is out of the pace it's out of the pace right so this is your b2 not into the base, out of the base, if you do the same rule right, like this. Okay. Now you can clearly see, right? You can clearly see the magnetic field, uh, they oppose. The magnetic field produced by the top wire is into the base. The magnetic field uh, produced by the bottom wire in region number three is out of the base. So since they are opposite direction from vector rule, if something is opposite, you have to subtract, right? So the net magnetic field. Uh, at uh, region number three is uh, so we, since we are just finding uh, <coughs> so b1 right minus b2 right and if it is if it comes out negative then, then the direction of the net field will be into the page if it comes out positive then the direction will be out of the page so let's figure that out so mu naught uh, I1 divided 2 pi R1 minus and you know why I'm using minus because they are opposite direction is mu naught uh, or you can just use the standard technique if it is the page, if it is into the page you know is negative uh, and since B2 is out of the page just use the standard vector never mind mu naught i2 divided by 2 pi r2 okay put the values 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 i1 10 divided by 2 pi r1 is 6 centimeters so 0 0.06 plus this right uh, 10 divided by uh, 2 pi uh, r2 is going to be 0 0.02 2 centimeter and calculate that so that's going to be the the magnetic field in the region number uh, 3 and calculate that uh, you will find that uh, 
so this is going to be 6.67 10 to the power negative 5 tesla okay and what's the direction out of the base right because it's positive since it's positive is the direction is out of the base here's the next problem again a magnetic field due to a long straight wire so Transmission lines carry huge currents across long distances. Consider the transmission line consisting of two parallel uh, wires, 3 meter apart and 15 meter above the ground. Calculate the net magnetic field if both wires carry 500 meter, uh, 500 amps current in opposite directions um, on the ground, uh, midway on the ground. If some, so here's the question. So first of all, let's say these are the transmission lines, right? And they're carrying currents in opposite direction. This is the ground, right? These are the poles, and this is the ground. Uh, this is the side view actually. So, but uh, the best view will be something like that, right? So, here's the ground. So, we now consider uh, two wires one is uh, carrying current out of the page, you know, one is carrying current in, into the page. So, the transmission line this is the ground, and you're standing somewhere here right uh, let's say and you're finding the magnetic field what's the net magnetic field here that's what it is asking so these are the current i1 and i2 but they carry current 500 amps of current in the opposite direction so here's the this is the, just the side view actually this is the transmission lines right it's out of the page it's into the page uh, and you're finding the magnetic field right here right and it says they they, they are separated by um, they are separated by three meters apart and it's the ground um, to the uh, where you want to measure the magnetic field is 15 meter above the ground so what's the magnetic field here right here right made magnetic field right here so then do the same thing you have to now superpose two magnetic fields but for first um, so so you have to do for figure out the magnetic field putting this at at the tangent you have to draw the magnetic field due to both wires so that this is the let's say and using this rule right it will be uh, counterclockwise right but here it's going to be like this this is b1 right and do the same thing so making this as center now the second second y will produce magnetic field something like that and it will be so uh, uh, it's not this quite scaled so this this would be the magnetic because it's tangent we want to find the magnetic field here and it's just the tangent to the circle this is b2 and then find the vector sum right of these two so let's first find the angle this this angle just like before right uh, because this angle will be same as this angle right because this is because this is 90 degree you know so if this is angle theta this angle will be theta and this if you do that so 15 and this is 1.5 so theta will be what 1 point inverse 10 1.5 divided by 15 and that angle is going to give you 5.7 degree right and now you now end up with this vector diagram so we just like to find the net magnetic field and net magnetic field will be of course in this direction we know that but what's the actual number right because the vector sum of this and this has to be this direction so the net magnetic field right to find the net magnetic field uh, you have to find uh, first the sum of the components is x direction it just becomes a vector problem right but the problem is b uh, one cos theta but this is the magnetic x component magnetic field from the second will be cancelling out exactly since they carry 500 amps right uh, this will be zero right they, they will simply cancel out right because they are equal and opposite so similar only the y component of the field will be contributing to the total net field and they will be in both directions so b1 sine theta right plus b2 sine theta right it's basically two 
right because they are both same so it's carrying um <coughs> it's carrying uh, so now b1 is again uh, mu naught right uh i1 divided by 2 pi uh r1 so these are the r1 and r2 okay r1 and r2 are this diagonal distance which you can find so r1 is equal to r2 is uh what 1.5 square plus 15 square right and that's uh you can calculate that uh that is going to be how much so let's calculate that real quick so that's going to be 15.07 meter and because you're going to use it here is 5.7 degree and same thing mu naught i2 divided by 2 pi r2 uh, sine of 5.7 degree you can just do twice of this so because they are since they are equal and equal object i mean equal components you can just twice of this be sine theta okay now uh, this is two times mu naught i because i1 and i2 are same and r1 and r2 are also same so you can just do this and put the values to mu naught uh, is 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 i is 500 amps it's right so 2 pi r is 15.07 and sine of 5.7 degree so that's the net um, magnetic field right so that's the x uh, y component of magnetic field which is going to be 1.3 to the power minus 6 and this is your b net actually right because there's no x component so the the total magnetic field is just the sum of the y component and it's 1. is 1.5 micro tesla you can say micro tesla right and it's very small actually even earth magnetic field you know in north america you know is 56 micro tesla this is the magnetic field due to earth in northern america right so and even if they are carrying 500 amps of current is only producing 1.3 micro tesla much much smaller than earth's magnetic field in everyday life so it's completely harmless actually so next uh, is uh, magnetic field due to a current loop right like this so loop means so, so far we've been talking about the magnetic field due to a long straight wire now let's talk about the loop like this so this is the side top view so if uh, from the rule if um, uh, the loop current right uh, the circular current like this is carrying counterclockwise current what's the magnetic field at the center the magnetic field at the center will be out of the case right now you flip the fingers the easiest way to remember this is flip the finger now this is your current thumb is the magnetic field right because you have a circular current and if the loop is current carrying a uh, clockwise current like this right uh, the magnetic field at the center will be uh, out of the into the base so these are the rules and the formula is given by this the magnetic field at the center of the loop is given by this and this is the side view right this is the uh, you know the different view so loop this is a loop it's not a straight wire loop is going like this so current is coming out of the base at this end and it's going into the base right and this is the magnetic field patterns at different and at the center uh, we can only find the magnetic field at the center of the loop uh, other places it will be complicated you need more math and it's given by uh, you know this formula so we're going to solve problems like this so here's the next problem and it is a so it's a combined actually you know, magnetic field due to a straight wire and magnetic field due to a loop so it's actually you make a loop you know uh, you take a straight long straight wire and make a loop like something like that so it's actually what's the um, direction and magnitude of the magnetic field at point p center of the loop right so it has a uh, two uh, magnetic field contribution here one is this top you know it's a straight wire right it's carrying current 3 amp current everywhere because it's just a series everything is in series but the magnetic field is also contributed by this loop current right because you make a loop so the total magnetic field is 
the, the vector sum of the magnetic field due to the straight wire, long straight wire and due to the loop, right, at the center. So, but we need to figure out whether they, the direction of the magnetic field, if they are in same direction, you just add them. If the two magnetic fields are in opposite direction, you just subtract them. So let's figure out the magnetic field due to the top wire and use the same rule, it's into the page, right? So here in this region, the magnetic field uh, due to the top wire, right, the straight wire is um, into the page. And for what about the loop? So loop is carrying clockwise current, right? So if loop is carrying clock, uh, clockwise current, at the center, the magnetic field will be into the page. I just explained that, right? Because you just do this. Now your fingers are a current, right? So since both are actually, this is magnetic field due to the loop current. This is both are in, into the page, same direction, the net magnetic field will be like the magnetic field due to the straight wire which is top wire plus you have to add because both, both are in the same direction right uh, and b due to the loop and into the page so negative simply means it's into the page okay so negative and then straight wire we just know the formula mu naught i is same for both 2 pi uh, r is this distance right and this distance is uh, just the radius four centimeter so r is four centimeter right and just just r and plus b due to the loop if you go back and check the formula mu naught um you know i uh, uh, number of turns is one right number of, it has only single turn i by uh, two r there's no pi for loop for loop form formula magnetic field due to there's no pi so just check the formula and just do this calculation now again same thing right put all the formula so the current it carries is uh, is, is carrying actually 3 amps of current 2 pi radius is 4 centimeter 0 0.04 plus uh, divided by 2 uh, there's no pi so 0 0.04 so that's the total magnetic field uh, and it's going to be uh, 6.21 times the power negative 5 tesla. So that's the net magnetic field at the center of the loop. So negative sign simply says into the base. Okay. Now the next rule you need to understand is this. Uh, uh, magnetic force uh, on a charged particle. Okay. So what happens is if a charged particle is moving in a magnetic field, the magnetic field exerts force on the moving charged particle. And how do you find the, the direction of the magnetic force? And then you have to use this right hand, something called right hand curl rule. Okay, it's a cross product rule. So what you do is first, if say the charged particle is moving in this direction, right? So this is the velocity direction. So you first, using your right hand, you point your fingers Right, point your fingers uh, towards the direction of the velocity, and then you curl your fingers. Right, you curl your fingers, uh, you bend or curl your fingers towards the magnetic field. Right, it could be 90 degree or it could be any angle. Right, it could be any angle there. And your answer is the force is given by the magnetic force is given by your thumb. That's the rule. Okay, and you will have to try a couple of times to understand this. So here's the uh, one more time. So you have to point your fingers first towards the direction of the charged particle, towards the velocity. You have to then curl your fingers towards the magnetic field. And um, the thumb is your answer. Thumb is the direction of the magnetic force. Okay, so that's the rule. And uh, what's the, this force formula is given by Q, V, B, sin theta. The magnitude of this force, which is given by, showing by the thumb, is given by Q, charge, V, velocity, and B is the magnetic field, and sine theta. Theta is the angle between, angle between the velocity and the magnetic field, right? And when it is 90 degree, it adjusts maximum force. So this is the rule you have to understand, you know, to calculate the magnetic force. So I have some practice on finding the magnetic force on a moving charge. So let me pick a couple. So here's the example. 
Uh, so here a positive charge is moving right in this direction, right? This is the velocity direction, and this is these are the magnetic field. Okay, these are the magnetic magnetic field is downward. So what's the it's acting as soon as it enters the magnetic field? What's the direction of the force on this charged particle? So let's say it reaches here. What's the direction of the magnetic force? So here's the idea actually. First, you have to point your fingers. It's kind of a little difficult. Point your fingers towards the velocity, right? But magnetic field is downward, so you have to change the orientation of the wire, uh, your fingers like this. And then you call your fingers towards the magnetic field. This is the only way you can do. And look at the thumb. Thumb is into the page. So the force is into the page. Okay. This is the direction of the force, into the page. <coughs> so the direction of the force here is into the page. So try that. So here, this is easy. So here, electron or, or negative charge is moving along, right? It's uh, moving uh, parallel to the magnetic field. So obviously, force will be zero. Why? Because B, Q, B, B, because it makes zero degree angle, sine zero is zero. So when, uh, you know, uh, the charged particles moves parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field, uh, the magnetic field has no effect on the charged particle. Magnetic field actually doesn't exert any force. Let's do one more thing. Let's do this. You can try this one. So here, electron or a negatively charged particle is moving uh, in the magnetic field, but the magnetic field is now out of the page. It's coming out of the page, right? Uh, so it's acting. What's the force on this negative charged particle as it enters, right? So then do the same thing. First, you have to point your fingers towards the uh, velocity, but since the magnetic field is out of the page, right? You have to call your fingers like this and look at my thumb. Thumb is to the right. But since this is negative charge, right, the force will be opposite. So this is the force. If it were positive charge, let me write down here side by side. If this were a positive charge, then yes, the force will be to the right, right. But since this is negative charge, you just need to flip the force manually. So that's how you figure out. So here are some... Uh, example problems on you know, finding the magnetic force are two problems here. It says a proton proton right moves with a speed of one tens to the power seven in a direction as shown right. So proton is moving in this direction at making forty five degree angle. And this is the x y and z. It's a three dimensional axis x y z. Uh, in uh, so figure uh, and the magnetic field here is zero point five tesla in positive direction. Uh, what is this action? What's the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the proton in both cases, right? So let's first do the first case. So let's do that. Uh, and uh, finding the magnitude is uh, easy, actually. Magnetic force is just use Q, V, B, sine theta, right? And this is given. So Q is the, this is the charge of proton, which is 1.6 tens to the negative 19, if you see, right? So velocity is, is, the proton is moving with that much velocity. And magnetic field is half a Tesla. And sine of, it ma it's making 45 degrees. So the magnitude of the magnetic force on this, uh, you know, will be um, given by this. So if you do that, 5.65 tens to the power negative 13 newtons. That's finding magnitude is easy. But what about the direction? Now to find the direction, you have to do this. So first, Point your fingers towards the velocity, but curl your fingers towards the magnetic. So magnetic field, you have to curl your fingers here towards the magnetic field. So the only way you can do is like orienting by this orientation, right? So it is is into the page now, right? See this? Curl your fingers into the page. So the its direction is into the page. You can put like this. So what about this? So proton is moving opposite to the magnetic field. It's making 180 degrees. So then force will be zero, right? Because theta is 180 degrees. Sine 180 degrees is zero. That's easy. So next is now here. Uh, the a charge is moving close to a long straight wire carrying current. Uh, draw the magnetic force uh, on the charged particle in each case. So this is a little tricky actually. So this is a wire, okay? These are the wires. And uh, this I is uh, the current carrying conductor, right? Uh, so let's first do the, it's actually, what's the direction of the force 
on this charge particle this charge particle moving that first you have to figure out in this region what's the direction of the magnetic field due to the wire because wire is providing the magnetic field to this charge so and based on now it's a combination of two rules right so first um, first you have to figure out the magnetic field due to the wire in this region so i'm using right hand rule right it's integral case right the magnetic field will pattern will be like this right in this region you can just write down couple this is the magnetic field and now use the second rule magnetic force rule and now you have to do like this so since the charge particle is moving that way magnetic field is into the case call your fingers and look at this so it's up so the force on this charge particle will be up now same a second so is this current is carrying current upward direction what's the first so first you have to figure out the magnetic field in this region right this region what's the magnetic field due to the current so do the same rule right is part of the phase here if you want to compute magnetic field due to the, if it is out of the phase here it will be into the phase here right these these are the magnetic field patterns right from a because you have to compute the circle so this is the magnetic field due to the wire right this is the magnetic field due to the wire in this region okay now once you have a magnetic field and the, this negative this is negative charge is moving up right so what's the direction so if you first find the um, rule for positive charge and then if it is negative just flip the thumb so this is like this if you draw a positive charge the force will be to the left right like this but since it's a negative charge the force will be opposite that's it so try your own so here's the uh, next problem and this is a um, problem on mass spectrometer mass spectrometer by name you know it separates the mass of the ions you know so uh, if a sample consists of you know many many mix of particles and if you want to separate them you know to see the mass spectrum you know you, you send it through the mass spectrometer mass spectrometer is simply a device you know that uses magnetic field uh, to separate the charged particles you know because magnetic field uh, because charged particles makes a circular path right in magnetic field as you know from lecture so here's the charge device so first the sample this is the sample gas particles right it, it is uh, sh uh, actually it is shot through a, uh, a device called velocity selector where you fix the velocity you, uh, you choose the velocity here by applying both electric and magnetic field and after that after selecting the particle velocity right fixing the velocity then you send it through the magnetic field so here this is a separate it adjusts the magnetic field and then different particles will have different radius of curvature and based on that and then you can clearly see on the screen the different mass spectrum right different the, the so different spectrum this is the mass spectrum so similar question so here is acting the the velocity right uh, you shot uh, you send the uh, these particles mix up particles with all all particles will have uh, this velocity and the magnetic field you use is 0 0.05 tesla in this region and the radius right they move uh, they are found to move in a circle so here is just the uh, this is uh, just you just send one particle it's a where it's, it's it's acting the mass of the particle actually what can so you have only one type of particle here okay in this particular example it just happens to be just one particle and it says it makes a radius of uh, this meter so based on that it's acting what kind of particles are this likely to be so it's basically acting what's the mass and based on the mass you, you figure out what kind of particle is this. it could be helium it could be hydrogen it could be oxygen so here's the main idea so when you send particles uh, in you know uh, magnetic field let's say this right I'm just giving an example when you send particle here it will depending on the charge depending on the charge it makes circular uh, arc like that this or that depending on the magnetic field uh, depending on the charge particle right so if uh, this is a positive charge it will bend like this right 
in downward direction because the force is this direction. Force is always towards the center. Force works as the magnetic force works as the centripetal force. And the, the magnetic force provides the centripetal force, the radial force, right? Centripetal or uh, radial force. So that's why it makes a circular path. So magnetic force we know is um, U, V, B, um, sign, but here in this case 90 degree, right? The, the velocity, the velocity at any given instant of time, the velocity and magnetic field, the velocity and the magnetic force makes, you know, the velocity and the magnetic field uh, makes 90 degree angle all the time. So they're perpendicular to each other. Okay, so mass V square over R. So this is V will, one V will cancel out and it's acting the mass. So mass is uh, Q B R divided by V, right? That's the mass. So uh, it says it has a charge of just plus E. Okay. So plus E means 1.6. It's a proton's charge. Magnetic field is 0 0.05. Radius is 2.21 divided by velocity is 2.5 tens to the power negative uh, tens to the power 5. So that's the mass of the particle that you, you can calculate. It's 6.72 tens to the power negative 27 kilogram. Okay, and based on this, it's most likely the proton. It must be the beam of protons, right? Because this is the mass of a proton. So here's the next problem. So these are just the conceptual questions, you know, short answer questions. So here again, so here you uh, send a mix of particles, you know, charged particles with some velocity, you know, velocities, um, you know, in a magnetic field and the different particles make different circles based on their mass, right? Uh, and it's acting which particle has the greatest mass and which particle has the um, least mass. So let's derive the formula first of all, and this is um, so uh, Q V B uh, sine 90 right is M V square over R. This is how charged particle behaves. The magnetic force works as centripetal force. We just have that in the previous page. And let's see the relationship between mass and radius. So R Q B is M V right. So your radius is proportional to the mass right. You can clearly see because magnetic field and charged particle um, are constant velocity is constant right so radius of radius of curvature is actually proportional to the mass right the more mass the more um, uh, radius of curvature right based on that so then obviously then this particle is striking here more mass maximum mass right and this particle striking here must have the least mass and it's all from this formula right all from this formula okay next a 10 centimeter long wire carries a 3 amp current is carrying 3 amp current right the wire is in uniform magnetic field uh, this magnetic field is 0 0.1 tesla uh, so and then we find the magnitude and direction of the uh, force on the segment now it's the same thing as force on charge. So it's now current. Current is, is same thing as charge, right? Because current is just, uh, you know, it's like velocity, you know. So, so current is uh, just the rate of flow of charge, right? So you can consider this as the direction of the velocity because charged particles, conventional charged particles, move in this direction. So it's asking what's the uh, magnitude and direction of the uh, magnetic force on this wire, current carrying conductor wire. So do the same thing. Uh, so first, uh, finding the magnitude is easy. So magnetic force on, on current, right? On current, there's a slightly different formula. I L B sine theta, right? If it is current. So I is the current, which is 3 amp. L is the length of the conductor, 10 centimeter, so 0 0.1. Magnetic field is uh, 0 0.1. Sine of 90 degree, because they here is... Uh, uh, the current is making 90 degree angle with the magnetic field because magnetic field is into the base, right? So that's the magnitude of the uh, 
force which is 0 0.03 newtons what's the, whatever the direction so to find the direction again go back to the right hand rule magnetic force rule so now first you point your fingers towards the velocity right because current is your velocity now direction right because rate of work charge is current and you have to point your call your fingers towards the magnetic field magnetic field is downward look at the thumb thumb is to the so its direction is so this is the force direction okay so to the left so here are some more practice on magnetic finding the magnetic force on um, current right so the many several problems i will just do one uh, so here because for two once you find one the other will be opposite so let's figure out this this one number a so what's the direction of the magnetic force on this current so then you have to do the same thing so point your fingers towards the current because current is now we have to consider as the charge velocity because charge flow is the current so that's call your uh, point your fingers towards the velocity or current right and call your fingers towards the magnetic field magnetic field into the face so up right your thumb is this and obviously this and this one we just did actually right and obviously this has to be this so these are the force direction so try on your own so next as shown in the diagram the magnetic field strength and direction will uh, so what magnetic field and direct strength and direction will levitate the two gram wire so you want to levitate right uh, this wire uh, the magnetic field is up only in this region 10 centimeter region right so it's action uh, what how much magnetic field um, will levitate this one so, so in order to levitate let's draw the free body diagram in order to levitate uh, you have mass and gravity in, in order to levitate you have to apply the field so that the force will be the magnetic force will be in this has to be in this direction right then it will balance it, it will counterbalance its weight and then it will levitate right so this is the condition uh, so so the magnetic force has to balance mg and magnetic force is i l b sine it makes 90 degree here is mg so what this is the magnitude and to, uh, next we'll find the direction so let's first find the magnitude so mass of the wire is two gram two but you must convert into kilogram gravity divided by uh, i is it's carrying um, 1.5 amps of current length is uh, 10 centimeter you just use this length where magnetic field is up right 10 centimeter 2.1 and sine 90 is 1 so that's the magnetic field magnet that's the magnitude of the magnetic field you're going to need to uh, levitate that so 0 0.13 tesla right but what direction so what's the direction right because direction is super important so you apply magnetic field so that the magnetic force is upward okay so let's try that see here if you apply because this is your current right you point your fingers towards the velocity or current and then you apply magnetic field if you apply magnetic field out of the pace right the thumb will be up so magnetic field should be out of the pace okay you apply magnetic field right in this region out of the pace so that should be the b so the direction of the magnetic field should be uh, out of the pace that should be the direction okay so here's the next question so it says a, a, a rectangular coil having four sides like this uh, carrying current is carrying constant 4.2 amps of current is placed in magnetic field uniform magnetic field constant magnetic field uniform magnetic field. The, the magnetic field is in this direction so you can imagine uh, you, like this you know so you have uh, north pole south pole right and the magnet provides magnetic field in this direction right um, and it's actually first question is what's the magnetic force on each side of the coil so the first is so the uh, ILB 
same uh, so 90 degree right because the current makes uh, a 90 degree angle uh, with the side one so that that's the force magnetic force on side number one and they are actually um, so the sides are uh, 10 centimeter and this is 8 centimeter so current is 4.2 constant current flowing through the loop L is 8 centimeter so 8 is 0 0.08 um, magnetic field is 6.4 tesla right? this magnetic field is 6.4 tesla and that's it so F1 is uh, <coughs> is so if you do this calculations uh, it will be 2.15 newtons right and what's the direction so direction is given by our right hand rule so so we have to do it's a little bit difficult right uh, so you have uh, you can uh, you can try um, one of these side one and side three right so it's like this so you have to it will be like this okay so you point your fingers towards the current which is like this right and then curl your fingers curl your fingers towards the magnetic field and thumb is your so if you do that the magnetic you can try your own this this is the magnet, <coughs> magnetic force direction and obviously with the out of uh, the force on side number three will be out of the page right the magnitude will be same uh, but opposite direction so you can try actually so on side number three um, point your fingers towards the current and you have to curl your fingers towards the magnetic field and thumb is your thumb is out of the page <coughs> so that's the magnetic force right so that's the magnetic force so here is into the page and obviously f3 the force on side number three will be exactly same magnitude right 2.13 newtons but in opposite direction so the is out out of the page into the page what about f2 and f4 and that will be zero right obviously because why because this is parallel and this is anti-parallel so obviously the force on uh, side number two and side number four will be zero and since you have now equivalent object forces acting on side number one and side number three and that creates the torque okay net torque and you can do calculation and the formula will be given the net torque on any rectangular coil will be this uh, i b i n a sine of alpha so what is alpha so and check my lecture slide actually to understand that if you have a rectangular coil like that so if the uh, so and this is the this is the area of the coil which is normal normal to the plane of the coil right i'm going to say n and if the magnetic field is is making angle alpha alpha right uh, so the torque right so if you pass current and if you put magnetic field in magnetic field the torque on this coil will be given by b i n a sine of alpha so what is alpha so alpha is the angle between the magnetic field with the uh, you know uh, with the orientation of the coil and the orientation of the coil is given by normal to the surface it's the area vector so that's the you can directly use this formula to find the torque on a rectangle any rectangular coil so b is magnetic field 6.4 i is 4.2 n is number of tons is just one because it's a single ton single loop area is length times width so it's um, 0 0.1 10 by 8 0.08 and sine of so in this case is sine of 90 degree right? maximum torque right in this example because the magnetic field uh, magnetic field is that way right and the area of the coil is out of the pace right so it's making 90 degree angle so your net torque is 0 0.22 if you do that newton meter newton meter is the unit of the torque okay So part C is uh, uh, so let me put it here. Part C is when now the magnetic field is perpendicular. It says perpendicular, right? Uh, initial position was parallel. Magnetic field was parallel. Now it's acting. What's the net torque and the forces um, when 
the coil is you know the coil orientation is perpendicular to your magnetic field something like that so now you can do uh, so you can draw the side view uh, like this where your magnetic field is now perpendicular right out of the place like like this right if you do from here so this is just a different view and the current is passing like this so if you do the rule magnetic force rule uh, the force on each side will be uh, something like that so f1 f2 f3 f4 so since the all the forces are actually um, pulling it uh, radially outward so then and this has no rotation effect no rotation effect so the net torque is zero right because it has it has no um, <coughs> no rotation effect because this will this the forces are like this it will not produce any uh, rotation the forces will be same the magnitude of the force will be same all will be same you know uh, i will be sine 90 but it has no torque effect because why because now uh, sine of zero degree angle because uh, see the man uh, the normal to the coil right the area vector will make zero degree angle since alpha is zero net torque is also zero okay so here's the next question so it's asking uh, <clears throat> to find the force on the bottom wire due to the magnetic field produced by the top wire uh, and uh, so since um, this bottom wire is placed in the magnetic field region produced by the top wire it experiences force and the same thing actually then the top wire also experiences force from the bottom wire because they are uh, in magnetic fields produced by each other you know and let's now calculate uh, that so we're calculating the force on the bottom wire right so to uh, to do to find the force um, exerted on the set bottom wire first we need to figure out what's the magnetic field produced by the top wire in this region so and using the rule, uh, right hand rule, right? Um, so current from the top, current is going that way. Uh, so, uh, so thumb is your current, right? Magnetic field is going like this. So in this region, the magnetic field is coming out of the place, right? Which we don't care because we like to find the magnetic field. Uh, we like to find the direction of the magnetic field, right? Produced by the top wire in in this region right so this is the magnetic field produced by the top wire b1 let's say right or top top wire now since the bottom wire is placed in this magnetic field magnetic field produced by the top wire now it uh, obviously it will feel it experiences the force magnetic force and what's the to find the force direction you have to use the second rule coral rule right so then you have to do like this right so point your fingers point your fingers towards the uh, uh, current and call your fingers call your fingers towards the uh, magnetic field and thumb is your answer so that that's the magnetic force on the bottom wire f2 right and uh, that's given by i2 because we're finding the force on the bottom wire is carrying 50 amps of current and i l uh, l2 right which is given uh, and uh, b1 right because this is the magnetic field produced by the top wire right so you have to use when you calculate the force on f2 you have to uh, put the magnetic field produced by the top wire and sine is so anyway it's making an idea so that's 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 what we're calculating this is the force on the bottom wire due to the top wire right and let's do that uh, so f2 is so i2 is uh, is carrying 50 amps of current l2 is l2 is how much is the l2 uh, let's is it given uh, let's see yeah let's say 20 centimeter it doesn't say anything so the length of the wires is wire is 20 centimeter Twenty meters actually. 
So this each of these wires are 20 meter length. So but B1 is the magnetic field produced by the top wire. So which is mu naught I1, right? Top wire divided by 2 pi total distance. So total distance is this distance. So which is 10 centimeter, right? And that's it. So 50 times 20 times this is now 4 pi times the power negative 7. I1 is the current in the top wire which is 100 amps divided by 2 pi. R1 is the distance of the uh, second wire from the top wire which is 10 centimeter. Okay. So that's it. And that's the force on the bottom wire and 0.2 newtons and its direction right is downward okay s1 and similarly you can you can find uh, now if it asks you to find the force on the top wire right due to the bottom wire you can do the same thing so redraw the picture like this redraw the picture so it's carrying current like that right <coughs> uh, so to find the force on the top wire due to the bottom wire first we have to figure out the what's the magnetic field direction right the magnetic field produced by the bottom wire in this region so using this rule it's in into the phase right because because first to find the magnetic force we have to figure out the direction of the magnetic field so this is b2 which is the magnetic field produced by the bottom wire right and then Mm, then use the second rule right hand curl rule so then you do just do like this right this is the current this is the magnetic field curl your fingers towards the magnetic field and up so this is your f1 right see up and that was so they repel each other you can clearly see right the, the force on the bottom one we already found right and you can clearly see they repel each other right so and F1 will be what I1 L1 uh, B now two right you have to put the magnetic field produced by the second wire and sign of 90 degree and do the same thing so the current is actually the carrying 100 amps right and L1 is 20 uh, meters so B2 is the magnetic field produced by the second wire which is mu naught I2 divided by uh, 2 pi r2 which is 10 centimeter so 120 and do the same thing mu naught is 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 i2 is i2 is 50 amp right because it's carrying 50 amp current divided by 2 pi distance is 10 centimeter and it's same thing f1 will be and if you do this calculation 0.2 newtons in upward direction right and this is uh, not surprising because it's Newton's third law they exert equal and opposite forces if this is the consequences of Newton's third law right so our conclusion is when when you have two parallel wires right carrying currents in opposite direction they repel each other and you can try actually if you have two parallel wires carrying current in same direction they should attract each other. You can try that of your own. So here's the next problem, and this um, uh, is a device called it's called rail railgun. You know, railgun uses uh, the magnetic force idea to accelerate something uh, very rapidly. So it says, here's the rail track, frictionless rail track. You know, rod is placed. You know, you know these the, the the distance between these two is 15 centimeter. So the battery is 1.2 volt. I want you to turn uh, this switch on, right? It's acting. Calculate the current through the copper wire first. Question. So first part is really easy, right? Uh, first part is uh, because it has the total. Uh, the wire has the wire has a total. This this circuit total total wire, right? This copper wire uh, has a total resistance of a very low resistance because copper has actually very low resistance. So current through this, and we use the convention. This is the direction of the current, right? Right. The conventional current direction always goes from positive. It is just so uh, I is V over R. That's just Ohm's law. So V is 1.2 divided by 0 0.0085. Because of 
uh, very low resistance wise because it's a copper wire the current is huge actually the current is 188 amps huge current flows through it and because of this huge current the magnetic force will be huge and that you know just accelerate you know okay so part b calculate the magnitude and the direction of the magnetic force on the copper wire right and then since we know the direction of the current is downward right what's the direction of the force and then you you use the same uh, same thing you know so you have to now do this right uh, <clears throat> point your fingers towards the current and call your fingers towards the magnetic field so thumb is pointing thumb is pointing to the right so that's the direction of the force try try right and call it so f is i l b a sign here 90 degree right it makes 90 degree angle uh, i is 188 amps we just calculate uh, the length is 15 centimeter 0 0.15 and magnetic field used here is a 0 0.8 tesla right and it's a huge force 22.6 newton here in a small system like this is a huge force and its direction is uh, to the right and that's what we want for rail gone right we want to accelerate this thing to the right side okay uh, now part c is now it says using kinematics what will be the wire speed after it slid through a distance of 10 centimeter now here's the hint first you have to find the acceleration right uh, the, so the mass of the rod is given uh, it's four gram right what would be the acceleration acceleration is force over mass force is 22.6 divided by the mass is four gram four kilogram you have to you must convert into kilogram so that's the um, acceleration uh, you know in the rail gun so uh, acceleration is huge acceleration and is 13 uh, five six should be that five six five zero meters per second square and using kinematics since the acceleration is constant you can use one of the kinematics formula this action was the uh, y speed as it slid through a 10 centimeter distance so you can use one of the kinematics formula final velocity initial velocity square plus uh, t a uh, delta x right and we are finding this so initially it started from 0 to 5650 five, and distance is slide is 10 centimeter so square so vf is 36 point so right <clears throat> so almost is 65 miles per hour and it's a huge uh, acceleration so here's the next question it's a little tricky it's asking what's the magnitude and um, magnitude of the torque exerted on the circular loop uh, shown in the diagram and what's the loop stable uh, condition so here you have two uh, two things actually here you have a wire a straight wire right it's a long straight wire carrying current two amps of current in our out, uh, out of the piece right so the, there's a huge wire actually like this here right and this is a loop actually it's not it's not just a wire it's the loop and the loop current is going like this right from this side so this is into the pace this is out of the pace right this is into the pace so loop current is going like this right and the coil is placed like this so this is something like that so you can show this uh, here you know uh, so coil is placed in this uh, as this this orientation right like this so that's the and it's actually what's the torque on this loop right uh, so uh, part A, so to find the torque, so what's the torque formula, let's write down the torque. Torque formula was right, so I showed you in the previous slide, B I N A um, sine F alpha, right. Uh, so in this case, alpha will be uh, 90 degree because the, the orientation of the coil makes an angle of 90 degree. The magnet. So first, your job is to find what's the magnetic field produced by this two amp current. Uh, this is the current, right? It's, it's a circular, right? So it's, 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 you have to first draw the magnet. This is the magnetic field produced by um, 
this this wire straight wire right and this is mu naught i over 2 pi r r is r is 2 centimeter distance so that's mu naught i over 2 pi r right and um, this is i of the wire you have to so that's your b b so magnetic field is produced by this long straight wire here and the coil is produced in place here at two centimeter distance so this is i of the loop right so this is i of the loop which is given and n is number of turns is just one and area of the loop is uh, so area of the loop you can find out you know is uh, diameter is uh, two millimeter you know so then pi r square all right because it's a circular loop so that's the net torque right uh, and so you put all the numbers so 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 uh, the wire this big wire is carrying 2 amps of current uh, divided by 2 pi uh, distance is this distance is 2 centimeters or 0 0.02 uh, this is the magnetic field portion so I in the loop because we are finding the torque on the loop so you, you need the current in the loop current in the loop is 0 0.2 Two point two amp and pi. So radius of the loop is one millimeter, right? So one tens upon negative three square. So that's the net torque magnitude, right? And if you do that, <coughs> so I have the answer for that. Uh, let's see if I have this answer. Yeah. So. It's going to be 1.26 to the power negative 11 Hilton's meter. And what's the direction? So direction well will be based on this. So you have um, here, right? The magnetic uh, field produced by the wire is that direction. It's carrying current into the phase, right? So what you need to do is uh, you have to do one of this. You have to find the force on one of one of this uh, side. So let's find one of the so let's say here so current is out of the phase right like this current is coming out of the phase right you have to point your fingers out of the phase and then you have to call your fingers towards the magnetic field right like this magnetic field is up so you have to do like this so then thumb is pointing to the left so that's the so if force is that way so the force on this will be that way so it will uh, rotate like this so its direction will be clockwise. So the, the direction of this torque, this torque is here is clockwise. This coil will uh, try to rotate clockwise, right? And it will try, it will rotate, it's actually second question, what's the loop's um, stable position? So it will rotate until its area vector is orientation becomes parallel to the magnetic field. So initially, so let me draw this. This is the coil from side view, uh, the coil, Initially, the magnetic field, right, uh, and this is the area of the coil, right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna call n prime like this. So they make 90 degree angle. Now, it, because of the torque, right, it will rotate and it will rotate until it does like this. Now, this is the new orientation. This is the stable condition. Now, right, B of the wire and the area of the while right so this is you can say area vector I have parallel and this is the stable condition stable um, equilibrium position you can say why because the torque is zero because why now the torque is um, B I N A uh, sine of right zero degree right because the area vector right n makes uh, zero degree angle is parallel to the magnetic field so the so torque is zero and that's the stable condition because it doesn't exert any torque so here's the last question i like to solve mm. so this is a schematic diagram of a mass spectrometer okay mass spectrometer uses you know the uh, magnetic field to split the ions you know having different masses so, but before you send it to the magnetic field region, it actually first, it has to accelerate and select some velocity. It has to 
provide some velocity and how do you provide the velocity fixed velocity by applying uh, cross fields so you can call this a uh, cross field cross electric and magnetic field okay it's called cross fields you know so you have electric field going in this direction right because of the capacitor and you have a magnetic field going in this direction so cross field will actually select the velocity so how do, how does it select so uh, so the the magnet the the uh, electric field will try to, uh, you know, deflect, say, in this direction. The magnetic field will try to deflect in opposite direction. So, but when you apply magnetic field and electric field uh, exactly equal and opposite, you know, uh, then uh, it will have, uh, uh, it will go undeflected. It will go straight. And that's what we want. That's, that's called velocity selector. This condition is called velocity selector here. So electric force, as you know, on charged particle, we know is Q, E, right? And here, uh, these are uh, some charge, the charge particle is given, right? The charge on this is plus C. And the magnetic force is Q, um, V, uh, B, a sign of 90 degree right here. So that's it. So Q will cancel out. So the velocity is just the electric field divided by the magnetic field, right? Yeah, and this is called velocity selector in mass spectrometer. Velocity selector. So velocity uh, depends uh, simply depends on how much electric field and how much magnetic field. And here, the first question is actually if it goes undeflected, which is the, this condition, it goes it it goes undeflected. This is the condition. What's the velocity of the particle? Right. What's its speed? So electric field applied here is. Uh, 2.68 kilovolts. Kilovolt means 10 to the power 3 per millimeter. So per millimeter, you have to then um, divide it by 10 to the power uh, negative 3. That's the electric field. So electric field is 2.68 kilovolts per millimeter. Right. So you have to change into this unit divided by magnetic field applied to 0 0.635 tesla. So that's the velocity. And if you do that, as the velocity of the ions before it enters the magnetic field will be that much. So that's just right after velocity selector. That's the first question. Now, second question is, if the velocity, however, right, if the velocity of the ions entering is now greater than this velocity, if you shoot with uh, more speed, then what will happen? So then the magnetic force will be greater than electric force, right? So then this ions will bend upward because since this is a positive charge, positive E, right? And then if you do the rules, if you do rules, the force, right? This is the charge. The force will be, this is the velocity. And the force will be upward. So if, the, if you shoot the particles with more velocity, more, more than this, it will bend upward right and if this is less than that obviously electric field will be dominant right and then it will electric field will be dominant right electric field will be dominant and then it will deflect in downward direction right so that's it <clears throat> and you can find out the radius of this radius of curvature and everything you know so if you if you want to find the radius of curvature, just use this actually. In, in magnetic field, right? In magnetic field, is uh, Q V B it works as the centripetal force, and then you can find out the radius of curvature is mass times velocity divided by Q B. Right? This is the formula you can find if you actually to find the radius of curvature for given mass.